Hi, I'm Hans Wilhelm. In this second installment, I will dwell further into Alois Ilmeyer's prophecies concerning the looming political and ecological crisis on our planet. While some may turn to stockpiling provisions and weapons as a means of survival, that is not the focus of this video. Rather, I will discuss the spiritual significance of these events and the guidance and assistance available to us during these trying times. So join me for the next few minutes as we explore these important insights. Let's step back from the tapestry of life and look at what war actually is. Absolutely everything in life is energy, vibration and frequencies. This includes war, which is a vibration. As we know, the highest ethereal vibration is love, peace, harmony, which is our original state of being in the absolute reality. Down here, in the temporary reality, we have the opposite, like war with all its horrors, distractions, atrocities, murders, suffering, fear, death and so on. War is a dark and powerful energy and vibration complex that consists mostly of old karmic burdens returning in the form of warfare back to the originators, according to the law of sowing and reaping. Wars and natural disasters are mostly purification processes, meaning a cleansing and atonement of our own old accumulated karmic burdens. But war or conflicts can also often be initiated and proliferated by demonic entities who feed off the negative energies generated through fear, horror and pain. This creates new karma, which eventually returns to the senders in a future war or conflict. World War I, World War II, World War III and so on. It looks like a never-ending pattern of wars, cause and effect, cause and effect. Most governments tell us that the only way to avoid war is a strong defense system, which consists of nothing but the same dark energies as war itself. Therefore Byron Katie fittingly observed, defense is the first act of war. Eventually such energies or weapons will be unleashed and create a new combat, new causes. Is there no way out? Of course there is. Albert Einstein knew the answer and reminded us that we cannot solve a problem on the same level of thinking that created them. But most politicians are stuck in the old fight and fight back pattern. Notable exceptions include Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King and most recently Nelson Mandela. They went into a higher frequency of consciousness and succeeded through peaceful solutions instead of brutal physical combat. But what about us? What could we do if we were in such a war environment? Ideally the same as these great leaders of the past, getting ourselves into a higher vibration. Divinity gave us very clear instructions by the one who said, follow me, I am the way and the truth and the life. His answer is always to love and nothing else. He warned us that war creates karma that will sooner or later come back to us. He said, the one who reaches for the sword shall perish with the sword. In the Sermon on the Mount, Christ said, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. This is in total opposition to today's profit-driven military complex that always promotes retaliation. But take the example of Dr. Martin Luther King, the leader of the civil rights movement in America. He said to his white fellow citizen, and do to us what you will, and we will still love you. Bomb our homes and threaten our children, and as difficult as it is, we will still love you. Or take Christ's words, if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. This is exactly what Gandhi demonstrated to the world with such humility and grace. His non-violent resistance eventually set millions of people free from colonialism. Or Christ's words, forgive other people when they sin against you. 
This is how Mandela avoided a brutal bloodshed in his country through forgiveness with his Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Mandela said, you will receive more in this world through acts of mercy than you will through the acts of retribution. For more insights, check out my video on the free will. If these three human beings could raise whole nations above the low vibration of war and conflicts, could they be an inspiration for us? Maintaining balance and harmony in the midst of war and people's fear, anger, fury, grief and confusion is not easy. However, the spiritual world has provided us with guidance and assistance over the years by living according to higher ethics, such as the Sermon on the Mount, the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule. We can change our soul's vibration and reduce and even eliminate our karmic burdens in this lifetime. Furthermore, as we develop strength, resilience, hope and optimism, any fear of death will diminish. Because our soul is eternal, Therefore, we will always survive any war, either in the physical realm or in the spiritual realm. Our present incarnation is not just about atoning for our old karmic burden. We must also strive towards peace and healing for all those affected by conflict and work toward a world in which war is no longer necessary. In these coming months or years, we may face significant turbulence and upheaval. Therefore, it's essential that we foster a close, more intimate connection with the Divine Now, as it will serve as our only steady anchor when chaos strikes. For those who wish to explore this topic further, I highly recommend two books, The Inner Path and The Ten Commandments and The Sermon on the Mount. Links are beneath this video. I invite you to join me in my next video as we continue to delve into the spiritual significance of these challenging times.